so welcome you all to the live session eight on the course of fundamentals of manufacturing processes so in this session we will be solving some of the sample problems based on the lectures of week eight so let's get started with the first question please uh, read the question and um, if you get the correct answer please uh, write in the chat box after that uh, I will discuss it uh, for everyone Whether problem one is visible to you? Okay, sir. Okay, um, please. Uh, Please try to give your response in the chat it itself. Okay, uh, I have got response from you. So let's uh, discuss it together. So, what is being asked in the question is the ratio of cut chip thickness to uncut chip thickness is always more than one due to. So uh, let's uh, uh, let's quickly draw a diagram for the cutting process. So initially we have work piece and we are trying to cut this work piece with the help of a cutting tool like this and what happens when this material starts work piece starts to get cut then we chips formation st start taking place this is the chip this is the work piece and this is the tool so what we are doing we are trying to uh, remove some material from the workpiece with the help of cutting tool so what is happening here this tool is moving forward and th there is a depth there is a depth given which is this much t0 so this much of depth is given to the tool to penetrate inside the workpiece and so same time we are moving the tool forward and we are trying to remove the some some material from the workpiece and the material is coming out in the form of chips so this is the chip material is coming like that and finally it's going there in the form of chips so in the question it has been asked the ratio of cut chip thickness to uncut chip thickness what is the uncut chip thickness so this the de depth which is given like t0 it is the uncut chip thickness but 
but after getting up uh, when but when it gets converted into the chips then thickness is changing the the thickness is changing to tc which is this much so here we can see initially the chip the the material which we are removing from the workpiece is having the depth of t0 and when materials get cut and it is convert it is being converted into the chips then its thickness is going to change and always it happens after cutting it thickness gets increase but why so we have to see in this reason what is happening here i will try to make a zoomed version of this uh, diagram so what is happening here this is the tool so when tool comes in the contact of the workpiece then what it does it tries to deform the workpiece locally in this region what is does it applies here we are applying a force f and because of this force locally stress are getting induced inside the workpiece and our tool is very strong so tool is not getting deformed and workpiece is less stronger than the tool so our workpiece is getting deformed but if if we see locally what is happening the material very which is situated very next to the tool tip it starts getting compressed and after a certain value of stress material is get deformed by shear as well as the material which is against which is little bit away from the tool tip that is also getting deformed but here we are getting elastic deformation but the material which is very close to the tool tip here we are getting plastic deformation and this is the tool tip and this is the material which is away from the tool tip so it is getting deformed elastically when will when reason very close to the tool tip deforms plastically and still we are applying we are continuously applying the force then what happens still we are keep still we are applying the force continuously so the small plastic deformation which initiated near the tool tip it starts propagating throughout the chip and because of because of the shear our material gets deformed along the slip plane this is or shear plane so our material gets deformed along the shear plane which is a very permanent deformation and we know permanent deformation is is called plastic deformation so initially the thickness was this much t0 but since deformation has taken place along the shear plane so material will start get accumulating in form of chips along shear plane so it will come like this and it will go like there material is coming like this and after getting deformed it is going over this is the rack surface of the tool tool this is the rack face so whatever the material which we are removing it is getting 
accumulated over the rake surface so basically we can say chip formation chip formation happening because of the plastic deformation so so the chip formation has taken place because of the plastic deformation and chip thickness is always greater than the uncut chip thickness it's because because the material is getting deformed along the shear plane which is tilted which is which is tilted so we can see the thickness uncut chip thickness was this much and if we take any if we take any line which is at some which is not perpendicular here it is perpendicular but if it is we are taking any other line which is at some angle let's say theta then definitely this length will be higher than the this perpendicular one and therefore the chip thickness after cutting is always larger than the uncut chip thickness and it happens because of the shear deformation of the material and because of this chip formation takes place so the correct answer for this problem will be the plastic deformation so uh, i think i have explained the answer if still if any of you have doubt please ask me or we shall move to the next question if it is clear to everyone okay it seems uh, there is no there is uh, no doubt in this question so uh, let's move to the next question please read the question and try to solve it by yourself first after that uh, we will solve it together and you can keep your uh, response uh, in the chat box itself and if you are facing any problem you can uh, let me know i will explain you please uh, read the question and try to solve it by yourself first then uh, we will solve it together and if you are facing any difficulty please let me know meanwhile i will create the poll you can give your response in the polling section polls are live if you have got the answer you can give your response in the polling section
yeah, I have got a response uh, I think uh, there is some difficulty because of some calculation so uh, okay let's start it uh, discussing it together and and then uh, later on you can cross check your answer so in this question what has been asked in orthogonal turning of steel a tool of positive rectangle rect angle of degree 10 is used the depth of cut is 1.2 mm the angle between shear plane is 20 degree and what has been asked chip thickness after cutting action so uh, let's uh, first quickly schemat schematically try to understand uh, what has been given and what has been asked so I will quickly draw the uh, diagram of orthogonal turning process so let's uh, we have a tool we have a workpiece here and we have a tool what has been given we are given with positive rate ang rack angle of 10 degree so what is the rack angle this is the rack angle basically this is our tool So this is the uh, rake angle. So it is uh, denoted by alpha and its value is given 10 degree. And what else we are given? We are given depth of cut is 1.2 mm. Depth of cut means uncut chip thickness. That is this one. This is 1.2 mm and what else is given we are given the shear plane the angle between shear plane is 20 degree which is the shear plane this is the shear plane what is happening so this is the chip so and the plane along which shear is taking place because of shear chip formation is happening and the plane along which shear is happening in order to uh, chip formation that is called the shear plane this angle this angle is given denoted by phi and its value is given 20 degree phi is 20 degree so this is given and what has been asked we are being asked what is the thickness of the chip after cutting action so after cutting chip thickness will be this TC and we have to find out this thickness if uh, you can you can recall the lecture uh, then uh, there was a, a relation uh, which was given like that tan phi is equals to r cos alpha divided by 1 minus r 1 minus r sin alpha what is r here r is the chip thickness ratio which is given by t0 by tc or uncut chip thickness divided by cut chip thickness so 
so uh, uncut chip thickness is this one and cup chip, chip thickness is here tc this so let's try to uh, let's try to put the known values in this equation we know phi is 20 degree and uncut chip thickness t0 is 1.2 mm and alpha which is the rake angle it is 10 degree so after we are substituting the value of phi here and we are substituting the value of alpha here and here so we'll get 10 20 degree is equals to r cos 10 degree divided by 1 minus r sine 10 degree that will be equals to or it will I will be taking the whole equation to the I will be writing the whole equation to the right side here so that will be 10 20 will come or let's say I will write at the bottom itself it will come 0 0.6 363 is equals to 0 0.984 r divided by 1 minus 0 0.173 r and now we will uh, will cross multiply the denominator with the of RHS with the uh, uh, 0.363 so what we will get here we will get 0.363 minus 0.062 R is equals to 0.984 R or 0.363 is equals to 1.04 6 r and finally we will get the r equals to 0 0.347 we have got the r equals to 0 0.347 and what is r r is t0 by tc so we will substitute r by t0 by tc equals to 0. 347 and T0 we already know that is given 1.2 mm 1.2 divided by TC is equal to 0 0.347 or TC is equal to 1.2 divided by 0 0.347 TC is equal to 3.4 5 uh, I have got it a but it's uh, it's because of some rounding of it so here so which option is very closer to this if you go and we see the second one uh, so there is a uh, some uh, there is some difference in the last digit of after the decimal but that happens because of the rounding of error so the second is the correct answer for this so uh, I have explained this solution of this question but still if any of you have any doubt or you or if you have is any difficulty to understand this question please let me know if you find any difficulty at any step please uh, let me know but if it's clear to everyone
then we will move to the next question okay it seems it's clear to everyone so uh, let's try to move to the next question but still if any of you face doubt uh, facing doubt at any point please stop me okay okay I am moving to the next question please uh, read the question and try to give your uh, answer in the polling section meanwhile I will create the polls I have launched the polls. Uh, you can give your response in the polling section. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, can you repeat? Uh, you were not audible. Your voice is breaking. Hello. Yes, Ankit. Uh, I think you fi you are facing some difficulty in second question. Is it right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, network problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, if you have any problem in second question, please let me know. No, sir. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Okay, then please uh, give your response for the third question in the polling section. Third number, sir. Second number, melting point cutting too. Uh, anyway, you are close to it, but it's not correct answer. Sir, Sorry. abrasive cutting material. Yes, yes. Yes, abrasive Actually, cutting. I think in uh, buffing uh, uh, we are using some cloth type of material with uh, with cloth, some uh, rotating. Yes, yes. Uh, I will show it to you in. Right. Yes, yes. I will. I will explain here. So uh, after that, if you still find any difficulty, then you can ask me. Uh, uh, can uh, Can you give your response in the polling section? You can find a polling. A section uh, in the bottom where there is an icon in the activities uh, named uh, basically icon made up of triangle square and circle there you find full false if you give your response in the polling section then uh, I think all of others can uh, give their response independently Okay, still uh, I didn't I cannot see much response in the polling section whether all of you are able to find the polling section or not where you can give you can where you can choose your options one two three four yes and after choosing the options uh, then we have to vote uh, yeah yeah you have to vote you have to basically uh, yeah actually I have selected the answer but uh, I I forget to vote actually it was not visible on mobile okay, so okay, okay, okay. now I find that it's, okay. it's okay now to search. yeah it's okay it's okay so uh, anyway I think uh, we should start discussing it for everyone uh, so uh, first of all uh, let's start the looking different options each one of each option one by one like single point cutting multi point cutting abrasive cutting laser cutting then uh, it will be easier for everyone to understand 
so this is the schematic of the single point cutting basically here we have a workpiece we have only single tool when we have one tool and one workpiece and we are cutting the material basically we there is a only one cutting is cutting edge is coming in the contact of the workpiece so that kind of process is called single point cutting basically from the tool only one cutting edge is coming to the contact of the workpiece that is called the single point cutting let's move to the multi point cutting and this type of single point cutting uh, we have seen in many places like turning on the lathe let's move to the multi point cutting so in uh, multi point cutting here what is happening here still we have only one work piece one work piece is we have and we have a single tool but tool tool has multiple edges multiple cutting edges which is coming in the contact of the work piece if you see one edge is coming in the contact of the work piece near here and another one is coming here next one is coming here so here more than one tooth is getting into the contact of the work piece so this is called the multi point cutting what is the abrasive cutting okay in abrasive cutting what happens here we have small small abrasive particles stick on let's say wheel basically small small abrasive particles they are bonded to each other on a wheel bonded so uh, we we try to do some machining on let's say we have a work piece like this and and this piece we are trying to machine with the help of this abrasive wheel so you can say here also we are we are having multiple cutting edges why we, we why we are not saying it uh, like a multi point cutting why we are giving a separate name to this so yes it is correct abrasive cutting is also a multi point cutting but the difference is here all the abrasive particles are stick or bonded randomly basically if you see each of having different random cutting edges like suppose that there might be one cutting edge here for this here 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 there are many many cutting edges and they are random there is no pattern is followed but in multi point cutting tool we can see after certain after a certain degree of angle there are cutting edges so it is a very regular geometry so that is the technical difference and also here here if we see the rake angles are same for each cutting edges in the multi point cutting tool each cutting edge have a, a same rake angle or they have similar geometry but in abrasive bonded uh, in abrasive cutting each particle have very different uh, cutting edge or cutting geometry or they have different rake angle sometime uh, it have positive rating rake angle sometime they have negative rake angle sometimes they have zero rake angle that is random so that is the difference between multi point cutting and abrasive cutting so now let's come to the laser cutting what is the laser cutting basically uh, we have we what we are trying we have a beam of laser coming from the laser source and we are concentrating the whole laser uh, to a very small area so what we are doing we are concentrating the energy of a laser beam to a very small area 
and because of this the material of the workpiece which is getting into contact of the laser beam that is gets melted and we are forcing away that melted material and that's why that's how the cutting process is happening so out of these now we will try to see what is the buffing so this is the kind of buffing wheel these are the basically small small you can see there are small small great particles are there they are stick on the wheel. hello sir yes sir what is the example of abrasive cutting tool yeah that's what i am telling if you heard the grinding process or uh, you can see this buffing process itself this buffing process it's very similar like i told that there is a wheel and we have very small small grit particles are stick together they are bonded together and with the help of these grit particles we trying to remove the material and this buffing process is mainly used for the finishing process so if you see small small grit particles are bonded on this wheel face and if we want to surf if we want to improve the surface finish of any component suppose we have a block like this and on the surface suppose there is some rust or something some irregularity is there or some oxide particles are there and we want to remove this oxide particle and we want uh, we want to clean it and make this surface shinier and what we will do we will uh, with the help of this wheel we try to remove these particles and finally what will happen the surface finish will become very good and our uh, surface will become shinier that is the buffing process so uh, since there are very really small small great particles are attached to the buffing wheels and with the help of those particles we are removing the material on the surface of the uh, workpiece that's why the buffing process will come under the abrasive cutting so is it clear or is still thank you sir okay okay so correct answer for this problem yes sir yes sir abrasive cutting so still if any of you have doubt please ask me or we shall move to the next problem no doubt sir okay no doubt sir okay, okay. let's move to the next problem please uh, try to read the question and again i am creating polls you can give your response in the polling section after that we will discuss it together Yes, polls are live. Uh, you can give your response there. don't know sir hello yes please tell don't know sir okay okay if you don't know uh, please wait uh, i will uh, discuss i will discuss 
if you know okay, then okay, you okay, can okay, yeah. so provide large area of cutting post distribution and heat this is yeah, yeah someone someone is uh telling uh option number four yes 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 Sir? okay yes that is the correct answer thank you please explain sir yes uh yes i have got the uh, response in the polling section as well as the few of you have uh told verbally so uh, i will request everyone please give your response in the polling section then in discussion we can uh, we can talk together okay 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 anyway the correct answer is the fourth one uh, now uh, i will try to explain why the fourth one is the correct answer so uh, first of all what is given identical cutting situation and second is what is being asked it's about a tool life in the oblique cutting in is compared with the tool life in the orthogonal cutting so uh, let's uh, quickly see what is the orthogonal cutting and what is the oblique cutting so uh, you can how orthogonal and oblique cutting are differentiated so basically if we see here I have shown two scenarios of cutting process. Here, uh, red one is the tool in the both cases. This is the tool and workpiece. This is the workpiece. So, what is happening here? Here, uh, if we if we see the if we assume that our workpiece is not moving only tool is moving basically we are interested in the relative motion of tool and the workpiece so what is happening so if you see this is the cutting edge of this tool and cutting edge of another tool is this one and the, the relative motion between the tool and the workpiece to basically tool motion we are looking so it is somewhat like that if we assume that uh, workpiece is fixed and then the motion of tool will is happening in this direction and here tool of tool motion is happening in this direction so if you see the angle between these two is here it's 90 degree and here it is somewhat other than the 90 degree so when cutting is is at 90 degree with with the motion of the tool then we call it uh, orthogonal cutting if it's not 90 then we call it oblique cutting and here we are assuming all other conditions are same like speed speed means cutting speed and feed and depth of cut all are same uh, similar similarly i would like to give one more example of oblique cutting and uh, orthogonal cutting here it's a turning example of the turning process here this is the this is the workpiece and which is rotating and this is the tool and this tool is moving in this direction basically horizontal direction with respect to the workpiece so here the portion which i am showing right now with the black one is the cutting edge and this is the orthogonal cutting likewise here again we are having a similar kind of shaft which is rotating and still we are trying to reduce its diameter from any from let's say d to small d here also 
we are trying to reduce the diameter from d to a small d but the only difference is here the cutting edge was perpendicular to the tool motion and in the bottom one this is the cutting edge and the tool is moving horizontally towards left direction so if you see here again the direction of velocity of the tool with the cutting edge is 90 degree but here if you see it is somewhat different than the 90 degree that's why it's oblique cutting now it has been asked in the question assuming identical cutting situation to life so what is the tool life when we are trying to cut any material with the help of tool then with the time what happens our tool gets deformed it gets degraded so how we will come to know uh, or what are the factors uh, which defines the how long our tool will last or our uh, tool will get a, will get deformed in how much time so there are many factors so out of these now we are concentrating on the oblique cutting versus orthogonal cutting so whether these two will have any effect on the tool life yes it is given all conditions are same it means speed is same cutting speed is same for both situations depth of cut is also same and feed is also same it means the material which we are removing per unit time is also same or we can call it MRR so amount of material which we are removing in both situations is same it means we are consuming same energy in both cases since we are removing same material in same amount of time but uh, so we are consuming this same energy in both cases but what will happen to the tool since same energy we are providing with the help of tool in both situations so amount of heat will generate it it will be the same so near near the tool tip lots of heat will get generated and what will happen if you see I will zoom out the both situations in the case of orthogonal cutting the length of let's say cutting edge which is coming in the contact of the tool is this much whereas in case of oblique cutting this much somewhat higher length of cutting edge is coming in the contact of the tool so if same amount of heat is distributed in a smaller area then what will happen tool will get heated more and it will get deformed early whereas if same amount of heat is distributed in larger area then the temperature rise of tool will happen little bit smaller and it will get deformed later so the tool life in the case of oblique cutting will be higher and tool life in the orthogonal cutting will be shorter so what is the correct answer the correct answer if you see that is the fourth one it will provide large area for the cutting for, uh, as well as the force distribution and heat dissipation so it is the correct answer likewise heat here the force will be distributed in a smaller area and here the force will be distributed in a larger area so the severity of loading will be higher in the case of orthogonal cutting in comparison to the oblique cutting so these two are the reasons because of which oblique cutting and the tool with oblique cutting will have larger tool life so I think I have explained the question 
uh, solution of this question still if you have any doubt please let me know otherwise we will move to the next question okay it seems there is no doubt so let's quickly move to the next question please read the question first try to solve it by yourself you can uh, give your response in the polling section and after that i will explain the solution to everyone okay i will i am creating the polls Yes, polls are live. Please try to solve it, and you can give the response in the polling section. Uh, A. Yes, uh, you have. Uh, you are telling this option is correct. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. I will uh, wait for others to respond. option a sir okay okay i have got two response for option a others still if any of you have any difficulty to understand the question please ask me okay i got a response in the chat 20.61 okay i have got couple of response for option a and one is for second option still i am looking for more Okay, let's start uh, discussing it together. The correct answer is A. So um, now let's discuss it together. Again, uh, first of all, we will try to see uh, what is given in the question, and then we try to find out the what is what has been asked. So first one is the orthogonal machining process of twenty mm wide steel plate. and tool of zero rack angle and what are given cutting force 1800 newton is given thrust force 1000 newton and shear angle is given 20 degrees and depth of cut is 1 mm and what has been asked shear strength so again let's quickly draw a diagram and let's try to see what has been given and what has been asked so this is the work piece and we have a tool 
and here uh, it is given that rake angle is zero so tool will be almost perpendicular and this is the uncut chip thickness t0 and after that chip will be forming it is also given the width of the workpiece is given it's a w and here this is the shear plane and the angle between the horizontal line and this shear plane is given by uh, here it is going 20 degree mostly it's denoted by the phi and its value is 20 degree and uh, what has been asked it has been asked shear strength uh, if you have gone through the lecture we are using the symbol fs small f s for shear strength so let's uh, quickly see what is happening here here we have tool and this tool is also has the width of same same as the workpiece and we are trying to remove the material from the workpiece and the material has been removed along this plane this has plane that is the shear plane and what has been given cutting force and thrust force so our tool our tool is like this and we are applying two different kind of forces first one along this this is called the thrust force or FT and another one is we are applying a cutting force which is called FC so these two forces we are applying on the tool but material is getting removed along this shear plane which is at some theta degree which is given 20 degree so what is happening if material is getting removed from this plane then definitely some stress will be coming on this plane and we don't know how much force is coming on this shear plane so let's call this force is equals to fs so this fs force is not known to us we only know ft thrust force and fc cutting force we know this because it they are easier to measure if you use a dynamometer then on dynamometer we can get value of FT and FC easily but we it is very difficult to measure the force on the shear plane but there are some relations through which we can find out the what is the shear force and that is given by FS is the shear force along the shear plane and this is equals to the area of the shear plane as multiplied by this shear strength yes it is true because if the strength of material is fs and we are applying the stress of fs on the area of as what is as this area and what is this this is given by T0 multiplied by width divided by sine phi 
so what is that basically t0 by sin phi is the this length if you see t0 by sin phi will be the this length and if we multiply is by width of the workpiece then we will get the this whole shear force area she uh, shear plane area so that is the shear plane area and fs is unknown and as of now we don't know shear force also so what is the shear force if we know thrust force and cutting force then we can easily calculate the shear force and that is given by fs is equals to fc cos phi minus ft sin phi we know ft is given 1000 newton and fc is given 1800 newton and phi is also known phi is 20 degree so what will be the shear force that will be 1800 cos 20 degree minus 1000 sin 20 degree and if we calculate this then what we will get 1300 49.42 newtons so shear force this value we have got how much 1349 newtons now what we know we know fs and we have and we need to find out this shear strength small fs so what else we have to calculate this area shear area here if we calculate this thickness t0 is given how much it is 1 mm 1 mm so and width is given how much 20 mm so what we will get 1 into 20 upon sine 20 and finally if we calculate we will get 58.476 mm square so as now we have got the as we have got the fs and what is a known shear strength a small fs so what will be the small fs that will be equals to shear force upon shear area that will be equals to 1349 4260 divided by 58.476 that will come 23.07 newton per mm square or it will be same as 23 mega pascals 23.07 okay. write it clearly m p a so correct answer will be the first one yes sir yes so still if any of you have doubt please let me know no sir no okay shall we move to the next question yes sir okay okay still if any of you have doubt please uh, stop me okay seems no doubt let's move to the next question please uh, read the question and try to find out the correct answer for this question I will create the poles. Uh, sir, for practically finding the value of the shear force, yeah. uh, we have to use dynamometer? No. 
from the so dynamometer is only giving no, no, the no, no. no. thrust force and cutting force because uh, it's okay. same uh, because suppose why why we cannot find out because of practical difficulty suppose uh, we have we have uh, we are turning a shaft okay and we have a tool tool like this so where will the cutting area shear force will act somewhere along this line fs shear force so it it is impossible to find out the how to measure it but what we can do we will attach a dynamometer to this cutting tool and dynamometer can measure the force along this or along this so it will give two readings what is the normal force and what is the feed force or we can say cutting force and thrust force that is the ft and that is the fc so we can the dynamometer will give two readings fc and ft but it it won't able to give the what is the force along the shear area or fs so that is the practical difficulty so we can easily measure these two and with the help of these two and if we know the tool geometry or or we know the shear plane angle then we can easily find out what is the force along shear plane so there is indirect way of finding shear force if we know the thrust force and cutting force and that can be easily measured with the dynamometer okay right sir right sir okay and now hmm. let's move to the problem number 6 please uh, try to solve it by uh, yourself first then we will discuss it together meanwhile i am creating the polls you can give your response in the polling section polls are live you can give your response there till now i have got two response i am waiting for the others still if any of you have if you are one uh, minute yes 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 take Stop. your time take one your time minute. okay, okay.
still more time is needed or I shall explain till now I have got three res three responses and uh, yes all of them are correct the option three option three thirty eight point six five is the correct answer yes sir, three okay. yes, sir yes sir okay three. okay okay great um okay now I will explain the solution for this question yes sir okay again uh, it is given in the orthogonal machining a tool of zero degree rate angle is used to machine the workpiece by applying a cutting force of 1000 newton and thrust force of 800 newton respectively and what has been asked it's it has been asked the friction angle again uh, let's quickly try to see schematically what is given and what has been asked so uh, we will draw a general cutting process like earlier we were drawing we have the workpiece and we have a cutting tool from which we are trying to cut the workpiece our sorry our tool is somewhat like this and again we are applying a thrust force FT and a cutting force FC so what are the forces which will be generating in this process so we will try to look at those forces so is here you can see this is the area where the cutting chip is coming in the contact of the tool basically it's a rack surface a rack face so when this chip is coming in the contact of the rack face and what is happening our tool is moving forward let's say some velocity v and here our chip is also continuously moving over the rack face with say, let's say some velocity vc v chip then there is a relative motion is happening between the chip and the tool rack surface and we know here we are applying large amount of force fc so there is a normal force there is a relative motion between the tool and workpiece so there will be some frictional force will generate in this area okay so what will be how it will look like so since this is tilted I will clean it okay so what will happening there will be a cutting force which will be sorry this will there is a frictional force that is called we are calling is capital F so uh, please uh, differentiate between the FC is here F FC is the cutting force and capital F is the frictional force as well as there is a normal force along the perpendicular direction of the rake surface like this we are calling it the normal force so the force which we can measure is the thrust force and cutting force but force is also being generated on the tool rake surface because of the friction so basically there are two more forces there friction force and normal forces and somehow if we able to calculate this friction force and normal forces then we can find out the coefficient of the friction uh, we know friction force is given by coefficient of friction into normal force so normal. if we calculate if we able to calculate sorry if we find the ratio of the friction force and normal force then we can calculate this coefficient of friction mu and that mu is equals to 
tan of friction angle here beta is the friction angle so if we want to calculate the friction angle then what we have to take beta will be equals to tan inverse of this mu so friction angle is beta so beta can be find out with the help of mu and mu can be find out with the help of friction force and normal force but what we have we have cutting force and thrust force then there is a relation how can we find out the friction force and normal force with the help of cutting force and thrust force so friction force is given by fc of sin alpha plus ft of cos alpha a similar relation can be given for the normal force okay i will write next to it normal force is given by cutting force into cos of alpha plus thrust force into sin of alpha and here it is given that tool rake is zero tool uh, tool rake angle is zero degree so alpha is equals to zero degree and now we will put the value of fc ft and alpha fc is what ft is 800 newton fc is 1000 newton and if we substitute it then what we will get here it will become zero because alpha is zero only we will be left with ft cos alpha and since alpha is zero so directly we will get f is equal to ft similarly when we calculate normal force then it will become zero because alpha is zero and cos alpha will become one and we will get directly fc so f will become ft that is 800 newton and n will become fc which is 1000 newton and now we can calculate mu that is 800 by 1000 or 0 0.8 the coefficient of friction will be 0 0.8 and this will be equals to tan of beta beta the friction angle beta equals to tan inverse of 0 0.8 and if you calculate it then you will find beta is equals to 38.65 degrees so the correct answer will be the third one so is it clear to everyone yes sir okay okay uh, one more thing you can uh, directly see with the diagram like uh, suppose if if we have this diagram i have drawn first one it is for the general case now i will draw same similar kind of diagram for the zero degree rake angle so zero degree rake angle means like this our tool will be like this so again since rake angle will be the zero degree so what will happen the, the rake surface will become perpendicular to the this velocity tool velocity so again we here we are ap applying ft and fc since this rake angle is perpendicular so the direction of friction will directly it will also become down towards vertically downwards so our friction force will be come directly towards the downward direction and our normal force will become perpendicular like this 
and only then we can directly see that the cutting force will become the normal force and this thrust force will become the friction force okay it was just for uh, visualization purpose anyway from the formula you can also get this one but you can also visualize directly here okay let's uh, if it is clear to everyone let's uh, move to the last question for the today yes sir okay uh, any of you have doubt then please ask me or i shall move to the next question no doubt sir okay let's move to the last question please uh, read the question and try to uh, get the response in the polling section meanwhile i will create the polls Yes, polls are live. Uh, you can uh, keep your response in the polling section. So, second number work harding. Okay. Okay. Let's wait for others. one number sir yeah so uh, i have got couple of response for the option number 1 and one response for option number 2 and someone also told option number 2 okay i'm um, still i am waiting for others to respond okay sir okay the correct answer will be the first one but we will see why first one will be the correct answer others others yeah. are not okay so what has been asked the continuous loss of tool material during machining occurs due to these are the option addition pier work hardening mechanical deformation thermal cracking so uh, first we will again draw a diagram then it will be easier to uh, for us to understand again we will have a similar kind of diagram we have our cutting tool and if we draw a uh, little bit 3d version of this cutting tool surface then how will it look like it will something like that oh. okay so this is a tool and when we try to cut the material from this cutting tool then what happens the material comes and in the form of chips and it slides over the tool basically this is the rack face of the tool and here the material is coming from here and it is going in this direction so like this and we are applying lots of force it is the cutting force as well as we are applying thrust force on the tool 
since we are applying a lot of force and same time the material which is being cut it is coming in the contact of the rake surface and it is the tool is moving forward so in previous question we already seen that there is lots of frictional forces are coming on this surface so here we are getting the friction forces and normal forces so what will be happening so the material next material what is coming in the form of the chips it is experiencing lots of stress in this zone which is here on the rack surface and because of this friction what will happen again if we if we try to zoom and just if we want to see the rack surface what will be happening suppose we have a rack surface rack surface it will have some surface roughness like this and again we have we are com the chips are coming basically we have zoomed out this area this is the chip and this is the rack what will be happening here because of high pressure and high force there will be there will be some spots where localized welding will happen between the rack surface and the chip material since lots of force fc is there and here material is there and therefore lots of stress is getting generated between the tool chip contact and because of that high force the material chip material get stick to the rake surface so this happens but again what we are doing we are also moving this tool this tool we are moving towards this and this chip is also moving upwards so because of this motion after a certain time this material will try to move forward and this rake surface will try to move in the left direction so this whatever the material has been welded locally they will try to deattach so when it will happen after certain time this whole it this the material which has got stuck to the drag surface it will try to deattach it will try to deattach and when they will get deattach what they will do they will take away some portion of the tool material with them and because of this our tool gets veered continuously toward the cutting process so earlier we have very very smooth surface like this we have very smooth surface this rake surface but after certain duration of cutting the same surface will become something like this like here 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 some material has been removed during the cutting process and it will become irregular also our tool becomes weaker so the continuous loss of tool material it is called wear tool material it it is called because of it tool wear happens and this process of sticking the chip to the tool and then removing the material when it's going when it's deattaching it is removing the material this process is called addition wear and this process happens 
in all cutting process it is an avoidable process so somehow we will we try to reduce this phenomena by applying lubrication so that uh, material should not get stick it the chip should continuously keeps on moving on the rack surface but still after applying the lubricant we cannot get rid of this problem completely still there will be some addition where will also keep on happening so that is that's why the addition where is the correct answer for this question but somehow some people also told that work hardening mechanical de um, no one has told the mechanical deformation and thermal cracking so what is the work hardening work hardening if we see if you can remember what is the work hardening if we have strain stress strain plot for a material we took a material like this and we try to apply some force we try to pull it then what will be happening some stress will keep on getting generated inside the material and after certain value after certain point the material will start deforming plastically so if we apply less force then material will deform elastically elastically means if we remove the force again it will come to its original shape but if we apply large force then suppose that its shape will become this then uh, if material is deformed plastically then it will not come to this original shape it will be elongated so in the stress stress strain curve this region is the elastic region basically if we deform till here material will regain its shape but if we deform more than that like in this region then material will permanently gets deformed but what will be happening there in this is the point it is called the yield point basically initially the material which we had if we applied stress up to this level up to yield point then after the yield point material starts getting deformed plastically but what will happen suppose we deform material till here and we remove all the force so again if we want to try this material plastically then what we have to do again we have to apply the little bit more amount of force earlier material starts getting deformed at this stress sigma y but since we already plastically deformed this material then if we again want to further deform the material then we have to apply little bit larger amount of force it will be more than the earlier sigma y so this difference which is coming basically this is called the work hardening so the increase in strength because of the plastic deformation that is called the work hardening but this work hardening has nothing to do with the loss of the material it just only basically what happens if our tool let's say deform plastically little bit then if we want to further deform it then we have to apply large amount of force but work hardening has nothing to do with the loss of the material it's just improves the strength of anything after it gets deformed plastically so uh, that's why the work hardening is not the correct answer the correct option will be the addition wear which is happening in the on the rack surface of the tool when it comes in the contact with the uh, work piece so i think i have explained the answer but still if any of you have any doubt please let me know no sir okay so it's clear to everyone 
okay uh, if it's clear to everyone then uh, we are done with uh, yes. this uh, we are done with this uh, live session 8 so uh, we will meet uh, meet next week at the same time in the live session 9 there we will discuss few questions similar to like this based on the lectures of week 9 so till then wish you all a very happy weekend please go enjoy study and we will meet at the next session okay thank you everyone still if any of you have any kind of doubt please ask me okay okay since there is no doubt uh, then we can stop this session here okay if any f if any of you want to give some feedback then please uh, you are welcome any suggestions any improvement if you want any kind of feedback please feel free to uh, share with me okay okay thank you so much everyone okay Good night. Thank you, sir.